chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Six, it's called Jesus Anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with, with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. Lord, we thank you for the, your word. We just pray for Paul as he comes to speak on this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Kathy. We're continuing to look at um, Jesus in that week um, between Palm Sunday and Good Friday and the things that happened there. Now, um, the story that Kathy's just read to us of how Mary anointed Jesus' feet um, appears in one way or another in all four of the Gospels. But it doesn't always, they don't all appear to be the same person in the same story. And so we're left a little bit confused about it. But I don't want us to be confused about it this morning at all. Um, because actually it doesn't really matter. Um, what I just want to do is just look at this story, um, whether... You, you you believe the one or you think it happened in the way it's given in Matthew's gospel or Mark's or Luke's or John's or you think it was different people doing it. It doesn't matter at all. What what matters is exactly what happened and and why and how. And I think we're gonna have a look at that um before um as we go through this morning. Um and then we're gonna take communion a little bit later. Now, there's so much to learn and so much that, that, that should inspire us from, from this story. Um, and in order to understand what is going on here, we need to understand a little bit of the background to this story. And, and so um, we need to go back some time um, just before Jesus comes into Jerusalem on, on the donkey on Palm Sunday. Um, and um, we read in John 11 that um, there was a man named Lazarus who was sick. And he was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And um, the sisters went, sent word to Jesus, Lord, one of the one you love is sick. So in understanding this story, we see that there are there is Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha, um, who were friends of Jesus. And they loved Jesus and Jesus loved them. And often Jesus would stay at their house when he was passing through or when he was in Jerusalem. And we read, didn't we, that when Jesus had walked into Jerusalem on that donkey, he went to the temple, but then he left Jerusalem. He left the temple and he went back to Bethany. And each day he would have gone into Jerusalem and then come out to Bethany, probably to the home of 
Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. But here we see that Lazarus got sick. And they sent word to Jesus, the one that you love is sick. And when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Mary, Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days and then, then said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. One of the problems was that Jesus had just had to leave Judea because they were going to stone him to death. Or at least the, um, the chief priests and the um, religious people were going to. Um, but <coughs> Jesus told them that the, he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. Jesus meant that he knew that Lazarus was dying or had died at that point, but he was going to wake him up. Um, so Jesus, with his disciples, they went back um, to, to Bethany, Beth, yeah, to Bethany, and when they got there, they were told that Lazarus um, had been in the tomb for four days. He died four days before. And... Um, what was happening, there was a lot of people who had come to mourn his death. And, and Jesus called to them and called Mary and Martha. And, and Jesus said to them, he said, why are you mourning? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me, will never die. Then he asked them, do you believe this? And they said, yes, Lord. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is coming to the world. Jesus asked to be taken to the tomb where Lazarus had been laid. And when he got there, there was a stone in front of the tomb and he asked them to remove the tomb. But, but, but Mary and Martha both said, no, he's been dead four days. The odour will be terrible. But Jesus said, do as I, I ask, remove the stone. And what happened was, Jesus called to his father. He called to his father. He said, did I not tell you that you will believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I know that you will always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had this, said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, he called out, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Jesus did a great miracle in Raising Lazarus from the dead. Mary and Martha, his sisters, they would have been so grateful. They would have been so pleased with what Jesus had done. And all the people were there, would have seen this great miracle. And this is the background to the story that we're looking at today because we're a little bit foot later, and Jesus has, has ridden into Jerusalem. Jesus is telling them all that is going to happen, that he's going to die on that cross. Jesus is about to be arrested. Jesus is about to be crucified. And each day he's going back to 
Mary, Martha and Lazarus' house. And they were putting on a special meal for him. They were putting on a meal in his honour. And Jesus would have gone there with his disciples and sat down to have this meal. And it's at this point, at this point where, where Jesus is there, that, that Mary, Mary gets this amazing fragrant oil, really expensive. They call it nard. I'm not quite sure exactly what it was, but we're told it was worth a year's wages. It was so expensive. And she gets down on her hands and knees. And she pours this expensive ointment on Jesus' feet and anoints his feet. Not only does she do that, she washes his feet with her hair. She is just so pleased to be able to worship Jesus. She just wants to praise him. She just wants to thank him for all that he's done. Her brother is alive because of him. She is so filled with, <coughs> with amazing wonder and awe of who Jesus is. That she just gets this fragrance. Maybe she knew what she was doing. Or maybe she, she didn't really understand. But she was anointing Jesus. Now Judas was there and he moaned about it. He said, what a waste. What a waste of this, this money that is. It could have been sold for years' wages. But Jesus replied, Leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. <coughs> you know, <coughs> this is an amazing story. It's a story um, of simply a story of Mary anointing Jesus' feet with perfume. But you know, I think there are three important lessons that we can take from this story. Three things. And I think it's appropriate that we look at this on Mothering Sunday. Um, because it really is a sign of how you know, the thing that I realized when I was preparing this story is that actually I very much doubt if a man could have done this or would have done this. It took a woman. The woman would have had long hair. Man wouldn't have had perhaps that long hair. Man would probably not have had an expensive ointment and been keeping it for, for a special reason. It took a lady, a woman, to be able to do this. But it teaches us that God, Jesus there, the Son of God, is worthy of all of our worship. In a way that we come, we need to bring all that we are. We talk about worshipping God. And often when we talk about worship, we, we talk about singing songs. But I think that this story teaches us that worship is so much more than singing songs. It is giving what we have, giving of ourselves in a way that just simply says, here I am. I just want to worship God. Because of all that he does for, for me. All that he has done for me. I just want to worship you, God. I just want to bring you everything. I just want to give my whole self to you. I just want to come and worship you as an act of worship. This story of what Mary did 
shows us how we can come and just give humbly, accepting who Jesus is, accepting that God has everything and he gives so much to us. So the first thing is that God is worthy of everything that we have. And when we worship him, we need to give all that we can to him, holding nothing back. Let us not hold back from worshipping our God. Let us worship him. Let us really praise him because he has done everything for us. And as we don't hold back in our worship, we can remember that God doesn't hold anything back from us. We can worship without holding back because God held nothing back when he sent his son into this world. He gave everything that he had. He gave his only son for us. God loves us completely and unconditionally. That means that God loves us despite whatever we do. God loves us. God loves us even though we are sinners God loves us even though sometimes we we get things wrong, we turn away from him. God's love is not conditional on what we do. God's love for us is completely unconditional. God doesn't say, if you come to me, then I'll love you. God says, I love you, come to me. And that is massively different. God loves us so much that he gave his own son to die for us. He made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy eternal life and have an eternal relationship with God. There's no limits to what God is willing to do for us. And he shows that through his son. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. God is love. God doesn't just love. God is love. Psalm 36 verse 7 (coughs) says, How precious is your unfailing love, O God. How precious is your unfailing love. God is the source of all love. And that love that comes from him never fails. God's unlimited, reliable love is something that we can celebrate and God doesn't hold any of it back from us. And the third thing is that we shouldn't be holding anything back from God. Sometimes we hold back parts of what we are and what we have and what we do and who we are. But you know, this this picture of Mary, she's giving everything in worship and praise to Jesus. We shouldn't either hold anything back God is worthy of all our love. So like Mary in this story, we should give our complete, our wholehearted devotion to him, to God. 
It tells us in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, that the greatest commandment of all is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. The love that we're talking about here is more than an emotion. It's more than an action. It's both an emotion and an action and a feeling and a, an expression. It's pouring out our very selves in worship to God. Just like Mary did. Let's give our very best to God. The story in which Mary anoints Jesus' feet with perfume powerfully shows love in action. Mary had so much to love Jesus for. He brought back her brother from the dead. He'd done amazing things. And Mary expressed her thanks in praise and worship by getting down and washing his feet with her hair with her tears, with this expensive perfume. She was praising him with all that she had. Today, we can come and we can worship that same Jesus. And we need to come with all that we have. Because we know that Jesus held nothing back. Jesus was arrested. He was tortured. He was tried. Although he was innocent, he was found guilty. He was taken and crucified. The worst death they could find. Jesus suffered that. And he did that for us. Jesus died on that cross to take away the sins of the world. Jesus died on that cross so that each one of us could come through him into a relationship with our God, a relationship that lasts for eternity. For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Mary showed her thanks. She showed how grateful and how love, how she loved Jesus with this act of worship. Today, we can come and we can worship that same Jesus. And we need to come and give him all that we have. We shouldn't hold anything back because he's held nothing back from us. He has given all that he can, including his life for us. Let's give him all of our thanks and all of our praise. Let's um, just pray together. Father, we thank you for this story of how Mary washed your feet. Father, as she held nothing back, help us to come to you with thankful hearts, 
praising and worshipping you, holding nothing back because of what you have done for us. Because of what you did for us on that cross. Father, we just come and thank you. We just bring you all that we have in praise and worship. Help us, Father, to commit our love, our lives, all that we have into your loving care. Help us to praise and worship you with all we are. In Jesus' name. Amen.